when we race the scale electric car, you really feel you are in the car almost. You do the same things. You power down the straight flat out everywhere you can. You brake as late as you can for the corner and you catch it on the accelerator and drive it out, which is exactly the same if you were in a real car. The only difference is in the real car, you've got your bum on the seat and you can feel what the car's doing for your body and your arms. Whereas on the Scalextric track, you do it all with your eyes. You watch the car almost that you dare not blink in case you miss the tiny movement it makes when you should have corrected it. And every correction is made via your finger or your thumb. And I can't really describe how you do it. You can't tell someone how to do it. You either can or you can't. Some people just can't. Tuesday night, St Mark's Church Hall, London, N22. The Wood Green Scalextric Club meet every week to transform the hall into their very own Brands Hatch, Imola or Monza. The thrills and spills of burning rubber are played out on the hand-built 100-foot six-lane track designed by club chairman Steve Carter. I've always been a club man, yeah. I mean, football clubs, whatever, it's always got to be with other people. And if it wasn't Scalextric, it'd be something else. I'm, I'm sure when I get older, I'll probably be in a bowls club or something. I quite like bowls as well. <laughs> And you can't do everything, can you? It's always the club. The kind of comradeship you get at the club. It's just uh, better than anything, really. But any feelings of comradeship are quickly forgotten when it's time for the club's biggest race of the season, the GT Challenge. With only three weeks to go until the cars line up on the grid, team leaders and demon drivers are dreaming of checkered flags and glory. You've really got to feel like you can do it today and believe you can do it today because there'll be other people there that feel the same and to beat them takes that little bit extra. I'm sure people like Nick Faldo could say the same thing. Derek Moore builds the fastest cars in the club, making him very difficult to beat. If I can ask for a good night down the club racing, uh, with me, I can't sleep. It's uh, because the adrenaline's flowing. It takes a little while to settle down. Paul Harwood, the reigning club champion, wants to retain his trophy. I don't go into races not to win. I don't go. Some people go for the enjoyment of it. I don't. I, I go to win. I go for the kill. Um, that's just me. His main race rival is Paul O'Hara. The young contender for the big race crown is determined to make an impact by fair means or foul. Taking people out is a is a pleasure of mine, and I think I've got a bit of a reputation for knocking people out, even when they're lapping you and you should let them go. And if you don't like them, have them out. Nerfing, it originates from proper motor racing. If you get up the inside of somebody going round, going round the bend, if you get up their inside and you slide the tail out, pushes their front out and they consequently come off. And then you've got the blatant T-bone at the end of the straight. You're about three foot behind the car and you just want to call some aggro, take out the leader, you're not coming anywhere. Just straight into the side, straight off, taking you both out and making them lose the race. It's all good fun. Upset a few people, it's all part of it, isn't it? My son Jeff and I are very competitive. We race as if the fate of the world depends on who wins the next lap. In South Wales, Richard Hardrick and his 14-year-old son, Jeff, are gearing up for their regular Scalextric Championship outside on their driveway. Mum absolutely hates and detests having a car in the house. She threatens us with everything under the sun if we don't pull it up within a few days. So we tend to go and put it down out here where she doesn't mind. There's no room to race in the house because Jeff's dad has a collection of over 1,000 cars. I'm very fond of my collection, and it's been a very important stability in my life. When things have gone up and down, as they do in everybody's life, you can totally lose yourself. You can be Graham Hill, you can be Jim Clark. 
you're there, you're the little man in the car, and you're driving that car. My wife thinks I'm a complete idiot. She would rather the house reverberate to the sound of babies rather than the sound of small electric engines. If anything did ever happen to me, I'm extremely glad I've got my son. Otherwise, I'd insist in my world that all my cares were buried with me. Because the one thing I don't think I'd be able to tolerate was the fact that a stranger would go through my collection disposing of them. You put it in in the wrong place. And sure. That was right. Right? Look that here. was right. Now, yeah, I've got it now. This piece here is wrong. That should be a standard corner. Look at this side. There should be four. There's only three. Aha. Uh -huh. You've done it wrong. These shouldn't be these. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. Yes, they should. One, two, three, four. So you want these two to go that way. Which they were already. Come on, boy. He thinks anything I do, he can do better. <laughs> Back at Wood Green, it's two weeks to the big race. Team captains are having to make crucial decisions about which cars to race. Steve Carter has decided that his route to victory lies in an old favourite. This is quite an old car. This is a Ferrari GTO, but because now for this competition in our club, I've made a lot of changes. It's not race box standard anymore, and I've also got some lead in there, which we're allowed to do. I like to brake late deep into the corner, and I find I like this extra piece of um, ballast in there to make it feel more sure-footed as you enter the corner. And they look nice. I mean, if you won the pools, you'd buy a car like that, wouldn't you? You wouldn't buy a Ford Escort. We wouldn't be racing toy ones if we could afford a real one. But uh, I can have ten of these. 